Alright YouTube, Paul Martin Pelts back here again for a brand new video. This is a wee leather video and kind of belt comparison video. Uh, the two belts I have in front of me obviously are Big Eagles, the bottom one being an original WWF Attitude Era Big Eagle with the sixth plate logo plate there. The top one is a cast Big Eagle, WWE version recently released by Figures Inc. Uh, a few months back, I believe. Uh, I've done a few relathers on both, but I've never had them at the same time, I don't think, so I've never had the chance to do a comparison video. But now I do. They've both been relathered by myself. Both are finished now. And I thought, uh, instead of just doing a video of each one, showing off the relather style, the options that the owner wanted, etc., I thought I'd do them both in one video and show the details uh, from one plate to the other to show kind of the comparison between the two actual uh, belt styles so I'll quickly go over the leather uh, that I did on it before I compare the plates so bear with me but uh, I'll try to give as good a review as I can of the plates themselves and compare them to one another so yeah both have got pretty much identical leather styles uh, the cuts and the snapbox styles I believe yep they're identical just looking at both they both got the two by six yeah what am I saying two by six two by eight male snap box on this side as you can see here as well standard JMR style as you can see there wider thickness than normal straps as well as you can see this one has JMR's classic style uh, shell camouflage tool focus for you there as you can see there it goes all around it top and bottom of the strap all the way to the other snap box which on this side is a 2x6 female snap box again just the JMR style there the WWF version though has a WWF oh, lighting's terrible here I'll go over to this side then a little bit better here as you can see it's got a WWF logo stamped Going all the way around it to the bad lighting, and that is terrible. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it there, but since the lighting's so bad, I can't really go as close. But you can see the WF tool goes from one snap box to the other on the bottom and flipped at the top there. So, this is uh, probably as close to accurate as it can be. And like I said, the 2x6 snap box here. Same as on this one. So yeah, uh, both as you can tell, pretty much the exact same cut. Um, and the only difference tooling wise on the front is the border tooling, which like I said, camouflage on that. WF logo on this one. This belt here, the cast one, has a leather backing, nice smooth leather backing here as you can see, you can see all the bolts covered up there and the male snaps on that side, female snaps exposed on that side. The WF one though has a nice blue suede backing as you can see there. Um, I can't quite remember when the, the Big Eagle had the blue suede backing. I believe it was the first time Triple H held it, but I'm not 100% sure. So, as you can see, leather backing uh, will always be more flexible than suede. Suede's a bit thicker than leather and it doesn't fold as well, so you can probably just see the leather one's a little bit lower. It falls a little bit, but if someone were to break in, I guess they would be very similar eventually. I mean, ring used belts, most JMOR belts, I think, had suede at one point. Or am I thinking of Dave Melton belts? I know the current tag belts on WWE have suede backing and they're damn flexible. I mean, any belt that's ring used, no matter, no matter what they have on the backing, will become stupidly flexible. As you can see there, it is extremely flexible already, but like I said, suede does cause it to be a little less than lather. Not much. But 
But yeah, uh, I'll, I guess I'll start comparing the plates now then. Uh, with loads of fingerprints on it, but um, I'll clean those obviously. But I should have done that before the video started, but I forgot. As you can see, the details on the cast Big Eagle. Uh, I would say they're they're good, but uh, for what Figures Inc. Wrestling Superstore claimed they would be, they're not as good as the claims they made. Uh, you can still see the details of the etching there. Well, I say etching, uh, casting. Uh, the dotted, you can see a little bit of dotting on the plates there. That's from the casting process as well. Both belts here, I should point out, have had their stones replaced by me, uh, along with relather. The lighting is just terrible here. I'll, I'll go into this side where it's a little bit better. No, it's not. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can get close enough to the belts to give a good example, but that's a little bit better. This is probably as close as I can get to them. Uh, but you can see the details there a bit better. The thickness, obviously, four millimeters on the cast, uh, two millimeters on the classic stamped version. The detail, you can tell, big difference there. Both do, uh, both do have the exact same artwork though, pretty much, apart from obviously uh, WWF logos for WWE and World Wrestling Entertainment for World Wrestling Federation. But other than that, the artwork, as far as I can tell, is identical, pretty much, as you can see there. Logo plates. Identical pretty much. Uh, painting on this one, the black, is really thick and I don't know why they did such thick painting on this. As you can see it kind of curves around everything and the paint is on, is level with the top layer of etching. So there's about a millimetre thickness of paint there which is unnecessary but I guess that's how they wanted to do it. And as you can see, property of World Wrestling Entertainment. And the style on this one's a little bit different. There's a bit more of a curve to the letters here, as it says, probably of World Wrestling Federation there. And that one has a TM trademark under the WWE logo, while this one's got the R, which for some reason is painted in red. Not sure why. But yeah, moving on, uh, the McMahon, the McMahon Shield crest is a little bit different. On the F version, they've got it painted, I'm pretty sure incorrectly, I'm sure it was painted like that on TV, with the red uh, lions with the white background. On this, it's a gold background with just white lions, so a little bit strange why they did that, but it's figures ink and they mess everything up on at least every replica. <laughs> or should I say they mess up at least one thing on every replica. That's a guarantee from them, but yep, you can see the detail on the lion, pretty good as well on here line probably shows up a little bit better detail wise you can see more of it because the face on the cast is a little bit weird cast face didn't come out great the other side there's not really much different uh, the shield doesn't have the crest in it it just has WWF and WWE logos detail exactly the same onto the center plates uh, the color I should point out I don't know if the color of the gold is showing up as well on camera and um, I'm looking for the screen now there's you can probably see a little bit more gold on the cast version than the stamped version uh, it's a bigger difference in person the cast version has a very yellow kind of gold uh, tint to it while this one is still fairly gold but more of a lighter shade this is very similar to what is it? The new big big logo replica. Uh, seems like the replicas they're doing now are going to be more yellowish gold or in that way I guess. It looks okay but I probably prefer the lighter style. It kind of looks more realistic to gold plating if I'm honest. Uh, like I said the artwork identical as you can see. The eagle there, WWE logo which does look very out of place on a big eagle. There's no, no make no bones about it. It just doesn't look right on a big eagle. Um, you can see WF logo here. Uh, the paints are different. The paint on the globe is a lot darker 
on the cast as you can see there that's fairly obvious um, I do prefer the one on the WF version though uh, it's more screen accurate I think curves, uh, 2 millimeter plates can be curved to whatever so it's not really a comparison these apparently can be curved but it is risky uh, cast plates can crack when attempted to be curved um, but I've re-lathered one of these before in the past and it had a pretty decent curve on it uh, but I wouldn't be offering it on a cast dock because it's too risky, it might crack and I don't want to ruin someone's belt for them so if you want to risk it on your own belt it's no problem with me, if it comes out great, good for you but for me it's just too much of a risk trying to curve these so but yeah um, I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping the details on this video show up pretty well um, it's good detail to both uh, detailed depth obviously goes to the cast big eagle of course it was always going to um, it's got much deeper detail on it but I, I honestly if it was for me I don't collect replicas uh, I only collect real belts now but if I was to pick one of these to have to be honest it would be the WF version I've owned one of these in the past and it is a pretty good replica and I mean you want to have it you want it to have the correct logo and the only one that does is the original WF version so but if you can't get that, I highly do recommend the cast version. It's a well-made replica with a re-leather. It's sufficient enough. It's a good showpiece and you can't really go wrong with that either. So thank you for watching. If you're interested in a re-leather or a real belt for me to make, uh, contact me on my Facebook page, which is Paul Martin Championship Belts at Facebook, whatever. Uh, Twitter at Paul Martin Belts and email is ecw1 at gmail.com. Uh, I may have a website up soon, uh, so stay tuned. I'll probably announce that on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter when the time comes. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope to whoever watched this video, this video was helpful if you were considering buying one of these. Uh, like I said, I recommend both, both are good show pieces. Both, if you can pick them up for a decent enough price, are worth it. So, thanks for watching and goodbye.